So, in this introduction to non-equilibrium, let's talk about some recombination and generation processes in an, in an overview type fashion. And that's in the context of having talked about uh, detailed ba balance versus steady state versus transient features. Now let's look at some individual processes that can occur in semiconductors that are really relevant to our understanding in these semiconductor devices. So we had uh, described uh, band structures of materials already. So you recognize, of course, on the left, um, germanium. And this one in the middle is uh, silicon and gallium arsenide on the right. So um, let's look at gallium arsenide. It's a direct gap material. So from the gamma point, there are bands. Remember, there's spherical bands here and there's spherical bands here. You can have a direct uh, recombination of electrons with holes. And if that happens, a photon comes out and it's called a direct gap transition in a, a direct uh, gap material. And direct means the valence band and conduction band uh, minima are on top of each other. And we'll talk about the relevance of that in a second. In real space, it looks like this. There's an electron and a, and a hole. They have to be spatially close and they have to have the same type of wavelength. And um, in the quantum state, and they uh, will emit a photon when they collide. So that's an, a one in a million encounter. And then you say, well, that might be very little, right? But remember, we have 10 to the 20 electrons zooming around uh, that uh, can, can um, recombine uh, with a hole. So it's actually a very prominent recombination process uh, if you have a direct gap material. And it's happening in gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, indium antimonide in 3D materials. And that's happening in lasers and LEDs. So this is very common, a, a, a very, in many ways, a very desirable effect, right? You want to pump elect photons out of, a, out of a laser or out of a diode. Now, there's another similar looking effect, but it's called an excitonic recombination. And that happens uh, in one D systems, um, um, where it's uh, meaning it's not three D. You can find can find electrons along a line, or in quantum dots, where you can find them in zero dimensional system. And it requires strong Coulomb interactions, where you need to bring electrons and holes close. And when you bring them close, they can build kind of a virtual pair with each other. They bind to each other and their respective energy together is actually lower than the band gap. And then they could collapse on each other and emit a photon that has now a different wavelength. Now, pictorial in real space, it might look like this. You'd have an electron that's in space that is uh, connected by Coulomb interaction with a hole, and the two have a sort of a dance, a molecule-like state that binds to each other. And the binding energy is called an excitonic energy that reduces the energy of this exciton, the electron and hole being bound to each other. Eventually, they will combine, uh, recombine and destroy each other, and a photon will come out. So that's an um, exciton uh, recombination. That happens in carbon nanotubes, in indium phosphide system, 1D systems, I mentioned quantum dots, transistors, lasers. So there's a, in a variety of uh, systems that is happening. Now, this one, those two were direct. Now we're talking about some indirect recombination via traps. Okay, so a trap is a state that is in the middle of the gap. And this is a foreign atom sitting around in our perfect crystal. Uh, copper is a very, very good uh, recombination site, gold. Uh, in silicon. So those can be uh, sites that are either desirably introduced or not so desirably introduced, uh, depending on your application. We'll talk about that at detail in the later section when we talk about uh, shockley reed hall recombination, which is really treating this mechanism. And what is happening here is you have to bring together an electron that will uh, 
suddenly hop into a trap that likes to attract an electron if the trap is empty and then a hole will hop up into here and recombine or destroy that electron. So this is trap-assisted recombination and uh, a phonon will ultimately take out the energy of the system. It's the lattice vibration that carries away the energy from uh, recombining an electron coming down and a hole going up into thermal energy. Okay, that happens in silicon and germanium. It's a dominant uh, mechanism in these devices and it happens in, in applications like transistors and solar cells. And we'll talk about it at length again at the uh, section where we talk about uh, shockley reed hall recombination. Um, copper in silicon is an extremely efficient recombination site. So for the longest time, people kept away, uh, kept copper away from silicon because it diffused well, and it also uh, uh, created these uh, recombination sites. Now that uh, a f better uh, Interconnect was needed than uh, aluminum or polysilicon. Intel reintroduced copper for interconnects, and um, it was important to get a higher conductivity metal connection into the system. But special precautions had to be taken such that copper does not get into the silicon because it's such a good recombination center. All right. Recombination rate is, uh, in general, slower than uh, photon direct uh, recombination. And so why is that? Well, in the direct recombination in a direct material, you have an electron and a hole, and they directly recombine, and a photon comes out, right? H nu. So um, it involves two particles. Here, you need to have an electron arrive at an available a trap site that is uh, not yet filled and a hole has to arrive at a filled trap site and they recombine. So it involves more particles, the rates are overall lower. All right, so it's a less likely event. Here's a really another cool um, interaction. It's called impact ionization. So imagine you have this electron traveling in a very high electric field and it's being accelerated and doesn't quite scatter yet because the field is so high and it gains as much energy, kinetic energy, that is equivalent of the band gap. Okay? So what can happen now is this electron has so much kinetic energy it can hit another electron that is nominally in the uh, valence band so it can create a hole and kick up an electron from the valence band in here. So a hole is created, another electron is created, and this electron that was up here is down here. So suddenly three particles are involved. You have the original electron that was lowered its energy, it created another electron that is not sitting up here, and it created a hole that will travel this way. So with one interaction, you create two other particles. And you can see that this might be launching an avalanche of particles. So, so it effectively is a three-particle event, if you will. Okay, that happens in silicon germanium indium phosphide under high electric fields. And it's important in lasers and transistors. All right, this process is the inverse of a so-called Auger recombination. So impact ionization, its counter process is the Auger recombination. And it looks like this. So imagine that you have an uh, electron that is uh, uh, two electrons that are in the conduction band like this, and you have a, a hole in the valence band. Okay, again, three particles are involved. That's how we start. And the two electrons collide and one electron is annihilated by a hole, the other one picks up the extra energy and is getting kicked up in energy. And eventually that electron will uh, decay with phonon scattering, then lose its energy to phonons and thermal vibration. So this requires very high electron density, lots of electrons being around and being willing to collide with each other. So you need to increase 
the relative rate of these collisions, so the density of electrons needs to be very high. So phonons and heat comes out, and again, it's a three-particle process. Happens in the phosphide, gallium arsenide, and in lasers. So this, these are important recombination processes there. So finally, let's talk a little bit about more than just the raw processes, but the energies and the momentum that is being involved. Okay? So when you have an um, uh, interaction of an uh, electron here in the direct gap material recombining with a hole and an, a photon coming out, what you need to balance are both the energy and the overall momentum of all particles involved. They need to sum up to the same energy. So, the valence band plus the photon energy needs to be the conduction band energy, or the electron in the, in the conduction band. But also the momentum needs to sum up to zero. Now let's compare some of the energies and the momentum that are uh, showing up. So, if you take, for example, a a Heaney laser, its uh, wavelength is 633 nanometers. Or you take a, a green Yak laser, its uh, uh, wavelength is 532 nanometers. You can calculate the photon uh, wave number as 2 pi over lambda, like that. And let's compare that to the silicon lattice, which is really the lattice momentum or the crystal momentum we have in the system. So the silicon lattice is at a lattice constant of 0.5 nanometer, and you can see that that uh, crystal momentum that we would have uh, in the system in our band structure, the 2 pi over A, is much, much, much larger than the photon uh, wave number. Okay? So that is where this um, um, direct gap expression comes from. There will be a small change in the um, due to the photon uh, k, but it's small such that really the electron and the hole have virtually the same momentum because this is negligibly small, and that's why you need to have a conduction and valence band perf virtually perfectly aligned on top of each other, and you will have very strong optical interactions because you need to satisfy momentum conservation, okay? All right, so the photon has large energy for excitation through the band gap, but its wave vector is negligible compared to the size of the Brion zone. Now, let's look at an indirect gap uh, transition and effect here, and that, let's look at phonons that are helping with transitions. So let's consider a transition uh, of phonon scattering in our system. We add up a, a hole that is sitting in the valence band that is uh, uh, scattering with a, with a phonon into a, a conduction band state. Okay? And that's the energy balance here. And we also have our momentum balance. Okay? Now, if we do this here, we have this uh, transition like this. Uh, and balance the total energy, uh, what is happening? Let's look at a little bit of what can we expect in terms of phonon uh, uh, momentum. Okay, so the velocity of sound in, in a semiconductor or a crystal is about a thousand meter per second, which is much, much less than the speed of light, obviously. So the wavelength of sound is therefore much, much greater than that of light. Remember, the uh, wavelength of light uh, uh, was um, quite opposite from what we had seen on the previous slide, right? So, now let's calculate the phonon wave number. So that's 2 pi over lambda of the phonons, which is 2 pi over the sound uh, um, and the um, sound uh, frequency and the phonon energy, and that is roughly 2 pi over A. And 2 pi over A is again the lattice constant of our system, which is close to the Brion zone. So, a phonon in silicon can, pro can provide you the needed uh, momentum transfer 
in a system like this where it can transfer an electron from one edge of the Brion zone or the center of the Brion zone to the edge of the Brion zone. So phonons can be very effective in transferring momentum. Now, what happens at a local trap? If, what does a trap do in terms of energy balance and momentum balance? So a trap is located in a single unit cell. So it has, we can associate that with a, a trap momentum as 2 pi over a, and again, that is of the order of the Brion zone. So a trap can help a lot with assisting um, recombining electrons, but you need a phonon that then comes out in terms of energy. So the trap can transmit um, or change the momentum of the system by then ejecting uh, vibrations into the crystal. So traps provide the wave vector necessary for indirect transitions. So let me conclude this section. Uh, we looked at the concepts of uh, steady state versus detailed balance slash equilibrium, and you should understand the difference. There's a large set of uh, generation and recombination events that can happen in semiconductors, and the direct recombination is photon-assisted, indirect recombination are phonon-assisted. So these are the key elements to walk away. So here's direct with a photon, here's indirect through a phonon with a trap, and here are uh, higher order processes with Auger recombination or avalanching uh, due to high electric fields or very high electron densities. So with that, we're now starting to be ready uh, to uh, understand how we got back to equilibrium. We will calculate rates of such uh, recombinations, and then we can finally get to the point where uh, we can do transport. So in the next section, we'll do more details on recombination and generation, and I'll walk you through these forward and reverse scattering processes in quite some detail. So I'll see you there. Thank you.